Hello. Hi, my name is Terry McGill, and I'm back with another lesson of the Word of God. Well, for the viewers of this, we thank you for watching our last uh, uh, lesson. And for those who are here, we thank y'all for uh, uh, the study of the Word of God with, uh, uh, with me. Last time was my very first uh, uh, thing I ever did on, 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 on YouTube. So uh, the Word of God will always stay the same. But some things I like to change and make it more interesting. Uh, but the Word of God will always stay the same. Never will change. The Word of God stays the same. So for the uh, for those who are here and for the viewers, we thank you for everything. You know, and thank you for watching and. We pray, and I pray, and I, we really pray that what what the Word of God says is not me saying it, but the Word of God says it. Listen to what the Word of God says. This is your song. I'm here because I've been through a lot in my life, and I know how Satan do a lot of things out here, how he deceives, how he's so cunning, how he deceitful, how he tries to use people to do things that it's not of God, but of this world. Satan is very evil, and he don't care about you at all. All he wants is your soul for eternity. And always, always keep that in mind and guard your soul each and every day, like you need air to breathe each and every day. So, by me saying that, I'm going to open up in the word of prayer first, and then we'll go to the lesson. And I have some uh, uh, the, uh, people here to help me with the Word of God. We scripture for me as well. That's our word of prayer. Heavenly Father, our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, dear Lord, we come to you. Thank you for all the things that you do for us. So we bless that you stored upon us. We pray, dear Lord, that you keep giving us the wisdom and the knowledge that we need of your words so we can spiritually grow, dear Lord. We also thank you, dear Lord, for the love and the mercy and the kindness you have for all of us, not just the uh, true worshipers, but the ones out here, dear Lord, that you died on the cross for all of us sins, and not just, once again, the true worshipers. So we just pray, dear Lord, that we have anything in our minds or our hearts will keep us from learning the truth of your divine holy word. May we move in naturally and our righteousness from us, and keep us focused where should we belong on your divine and holy word. So we can see the truth and understand the truth for ourselves. So Father God, we just once again we thank you. We can't never get enough of thank you for all the air you give us, the clothes or a bag of food or the stomach. We thank you for all these things that you give us. And we know it rains on the just and the unjust, dear Lord. But we pray we thank you for everything and we just pray, dear Lord, keep helping us to follow you by your word, no matter what. I also pray for the girls out there, dear Lord. And they that they hear your word, dear Lord, I want to follow the true meaning of your divine holy word as well as uh, those who are here. And Father God, as well as myself, and Father God, we just pray to pray to you in your most divine, holy, almighty, and wonderful name. Amen. 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 Let's get started. A lot of people don't really uh, might not understand what sound doctrine means, but I want to talk, we're going to talk about faith. But I want to help you understand what sound doctrine means. Also, if you have any comments or any questions, you also you also can email me at sound that's underscore doctrine that sound underscore doctrine of the Word of God, or at Terry McGill ninety six at yahoo.com. If you have any questions, or if you go to Terry McGill. Sound Doctrine of the Word of God on YouTube. Leave your comment, subscribe. So every time you subscribe, every time I uh, post a video, you, uh, uh, you'll you know that I have uh, posted one. So if any comments, just leave them at them uh, places that I uh, have given you. So now, we'll find what Sound Doctrine is, and we're going to go into faith. Well, everyone turn to me, and for the viewers at home, Turn to me, 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. That's 2 Timothy, chapter 4, 1 through 6. 
And you didn't want the time to get there? We all have it? Yes. And it reads, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead and his appearing of his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. We prove, we prove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, meaning teaching. For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, meaning teaching. But after their own lust, shall they heed to themselves teaching, teachers, excuse me, having itchy ears. That means basically go out and listen to what people are saying to you and not follow the word of God. They listen to anything out here except uh, say what the word of God is saying. They might say, well, we're saved by this uh, singing of the choir. They believe, because I don't believe that. I have heard that. And when I'm saying to you, I have heard this. It's not made up. And no script, it's not scripted here. This is the truth of the word of God. Some say they are saved by drinking holy water. Some say they are uh, saved by paying their tithes. Some say they are saved just by just going to church. Or some say they say they are saved by doing some work in church. You know, I have to have my work in the church. These are all things that what people don't think they're saved about. But the Word of God tells us something totally different. And I want to ask you a question for those at home. Who are you going to listen to, the Word of God or the Word of Man? But let's, let's keep on reading. So when they, when, they go, when they turn away from the truth, verse 3, they go turn away from the truth. They don't want to hear a sound doctrine, sound teaching. And remember now, this is your soul. They don't want to hear these things. They want to hear something totally different than the Word of God. And verse uh, 4, And they shall turn away their ear from the truth and shall be turned uh, to fables. That means stories. That means Things that are of events that have happened before. They will turn away from things like that. And I've seen this with my own eyes. Once again, I'm not just saying this. I have seen this. Right? Before I even know the, knew the word of God, I have seen this. I have been in churches like that before. But like I said, I didn't know the word of God, so you can tell me anything. You know, like that. This is my soul on the line. I didn't know nothing about the word of God. I'm just following behind everybody and what they do. So I'm following behind them and not the word of God. Enough to know the truth for myself. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things endure affliction. Do the work of evangelists. Make full proof of thy ministry. That means teach the word, be assist, uh, instant. Make full proof of the ministry, of the word of God. Teach the truth of the word of God. The Bible calls the word the truth. I will show you what the truth is. You know, I just got to say it. I'm not sure what the truth is, but the Bible call uh, said the truth. Teach that they're gonna turn away from the truth. They're gonna turn away from the truth. They're gonna turn away from the truth. That's not what the truth is. Uh, when I turn to me, that in Gospel of John, chapter seventeen. 16 through 17. Excuse me. That's Gospel, Gospel John, chapter 17. That's 16 through 17. Once again, that's Gospel John, chapter 17. 16. Through 17. We all have it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and it reads that uh, Jesus Christ says it. Now, Jesus Christ says it. Who do you believe? Man or Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is God. Jesus 
Jesus Christ said, they are not of this world. And when she's speaking of the disciples, they are not of this world. Matter of fact, I'm not going to take that out of context. That is going back up to uh, Gospel of John, chapter 17, and I started verse uh, 14. That's Gospel of John, chapter 17, and I started verse 14 through 17. You there? Yes. Okay. And it reads, I have, Jesus Christ said, I have given uh, them thy word, and the world ha have hated them because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. That means Jesus Christ had given the word to the disciples. And I implore you to read that uh, story of John chapter 1 all the way down to John chapter uh, uh, 22. I implore you to read that. Uh, and Jesus Christ said, verse 4, uh, 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of this world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is the truth. Sanctify me, look it up, send them for sanctify me, set apart. That means set apart them in their heart. Set apart. I mean, sanctify them in the truth. What, the, what people are going to do in the last days? They're going to turn away from what? The truth. Anybody have a question? No. Mr. President? No. So, <clears throat> so just going to church doesn't give us faith and save us. Is that what you're saying? Yes. It's not going to go to church. Anyway, I can get to go to church. I just get to go to church every day, hang over. Oh, not every day, but on Saturdays, you know, like, and get uh, drink all Saturday and get up on uh, and drink uh, get up and go to church on Sunday with a mouthful of candy in my mouth. You know, and go to church and try and put that form of God in this soul about the members and the preacher and, and the deacons and, and but that wasn't doing no good. As soon as I got out of church, I'm back drinking again. So what good is that? It's not it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna save, you know, right? Because I'm still doing the work of saying. You know, I might uh, come to church, but I'm still doing the work of Satan. You know, I'm still going out here doing the exact same thing. My life hasn't changed at all. You know, we do, we go to church just to get a uh, get a life together. You know, with the Word of God. You know, right? but if the Word of God is not getting taught or teach or preached the right way, like the Bible says, Jesus Christ says, we said what Jesus Christ said is, it's going to be not effect. It's man-made commandments. And that's more chapter seven. Verse 7 through, uh, I think, 11. Matthew chapter 15. Uh, reach 15, 1 through about 23. Because they end up with man made commandments. No, and that's all. It's not going to do you no good come judgment day. But the word of God will change your whole life around. Once again, as those who uh, uh, know me, they can see that. It's not about me. Once again, it's not about me. It's not about what I do out here. It's about God getting God's word out correctly. Because it's not about me. It's not about uh, me or no one else. It's about making it to the kingdom of heaven and doing what God tells me to do. So that's where I, right now, is if I need to, if I just kept on going to church, uh, my sister, if I just kept on going to church, if I just kept on going to church and listened to man-made commandments, I won't be here right here right now. Teaching the word of God. I won't be here right now teaching this. I still be doing the exact same thing. Anybody have any more anyone else has more questions? Or do that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But remember, uh go back to John, Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ said, Jesus said, the word is the truth. Remember, in Timothy, they said people are going to turn away from what? Truth. They're going to turn away from the truth. And what's the truth? The word, the word of God. The truth. They're going to turn away from it. They're going to turn away and listen to anything else. Are you saying this way? You say that way. You say this way. You say the way. It's only one way to buy speak of how you're saved. Not all the other ways. So, But I'm here through the grace of God. Because my life was in shambles and I was shipwrecked. But God stepped in and he has saved my soul. And I'm here for the rest of this, because I'm not ashamed no more how my life used to be. I'm not ashamed. Because the Bible teaches that any man who's in Christ is a new creature. 
So I'm not ashamed about nothing. I'm not ashamed about nothing because I follow God now by his word. Uh, so anybody have any more questions about what's the truth is? No. no. Okay. Now, this is out for a second. Uh, it's stepping too long. Last week, we talked about, uh, uh, last time, excuse me, last time we talked about faith. Anybody remember that? Yes. yes. We talked about faith. And for the viewers at home, we talked about faith last week and uh, what faith actually really is. Uh, did anybody know? Anybody can recall what faith is? It's a word. Word. So, uh, remember, uh, Romans 10, 17 tells us faith can by hear what? The word. The word of God. So how can I have faith? That's the word. That's it. Anybody have any questions with that? I can help. I mean, I can walk by, don't get me wrong, I can walk by faith if I have what? The word. The word. If I don't have the word, how can I walk by faith? The Bible tells us to walk by faith. How can I walk by faith if I don't have the word of God in me? So that's Romans 10, 17. That is Romans 10, 17. Faith can by hearing the word of God. That's the only way you can have faith. I can't have faith any other way. Only by the word of God. That's how I can have faith. Any more questions? Now, if someone cares to read for me, uh, Colossians. That is Colossians 3, chapter 16. That's Colossians 3, chapter, uh, uh, verse 16. Colossians 3, 16. Uh, we'll get that first. I'm there. there. Alright. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Thank you very much, sister. You know, the Bible, Paul, when Paul wrote this, Paul wrote this and said, he said it for a reason. He tells us to let the word of Christ dwell in us. Paul wrote that for a reason. Let the word of Christ dwell in us. You know, right? Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Like you know, richly. When I'm teaching, and admonishing me, warning. When I'm right here right now, warning. You know, right? Teaching and warning. You know, right? See with grace in your heart to the Lord. And as we go through study and study and study, we're going to find out what grace is. How we can have grace, so we can make sure we are saved come judgment day. But it's a lot. Of, I can say it's a lot of ways I've heard that how we are saved by grace, and, I, and the ways I heard it because I didn't know it myself, right? I just believe it. But the Bible says something totally different. But through God's word and God's word only, we go uh, find out the truth. Now. And faith can by hearing the word of God. What faith can by hear? The word. The word. The word. The word. So if I let the word of Christ dwell in, uh, dwell in me, the dwell in you, if you let the word of Christ dwell in you, you have one of you. The word. And you also have one of you. God. God. And you also have one faith. of you. Faith. Because faith can by hearing the word of God. And if I let the word dwell in me, I have what dwell in me? Faith. 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 I saw this side, excuse me. I saw this side. This is the truth. Right? You have you have faith dwelling in you. The word of Christ dwelling in you, and faith come by hearing the word of God. If I let the word of Christ dwell in me, what's dwelling in me? Faith. Faith, faith in God. That's dwelling in me. That, that's what the faith is, it's dwelling in me. Because if I have the uh, word dwelling in me, I don't have what dwelling in me. Faith is not dwelling in me. So I don't have faith in God. Because see, faith, we got faith if I hear the word of God. If I don't have the word of God, it dwells in me, I don't have faith. You know, uh, you hear this a lot of people say, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. I didn't understand that either. I, I have faith too, because I just grow up with anybody I'm saying, you know what? Right? So I came to the word of God myself and learned the truth. This is my eternal soul. This is 
your eternal soul. This is your eternal soul. So I came to the word of God myself, and I understand what faith is. And I thank you, God, so much for that. And he could have called me home when I'm back in my sinful life, you know right? We kind of bounced that we all have sin, you know right? And came short of the glory of God. But he could have called us home, the ones who had fallen, the ones who really truly followed him. He could have called us home back then. But no, he gave us the opportunity to have eternal life. I'm going to take full advantage of that, full advantage of it. But if I let the word of Christ dwell in, uh, in, in, in me, well, dwell in you, actually, right? I have what? Well, once again, faith. 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 That's it. You got faith if I hear the word of God. Any questions about that? Any questions? Okay. Well, now, someone turned to me. That's Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. 15 through 17. The Ephesians chapter 3, 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 3. 15 through 17. The Ephesians chapter 3, 15 through 17. Will someone care to read that for me, please? Um, whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Did I hear that? That Christ dwell in your hearts by what? Because of the Christ dwell in your heart by what? Faith. 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 So, how can Christ dwell in my heart? Only by faith, right? And faith can by him. That's why the Bible teaches us this. Let the word of Christ dwell in us. Okay. And if, if, if I let the word dwell in me, the word dwell in me, the Bible says that Christ, that Christ, that Christ dwell in your heart by faith. So, if I let faith come by what? Hearing the word of God. So how, and we gotta let the word of Christ dwell in you. If the word of Christ dwell in me, then faith is dwelling in me. And the Bible teaches us, Ephesians chapter 3, 15, 17, let Christ dwell in your heart by faith. Faith by what? Hear what? The word of God. So how can Christ dwell in my heart by faith? Only by the word. Because the Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And that's how, and so, and once again, we went through this before, I think last time, we said this before. And the Word was God, and, and the Word became flesh, which is Jesus Christ. Gospel of John, chapter 1 through 14. Uh, 1 through 14. The Word was God, the Word became flesh. Let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. The Word dwell in us, the Word was God, God dwell in us. And that's how God dwell in us, God is the Spirit. When we go, when we ask, we keep on doing lesson after lesson after lesson. We gonna see how the Holy Spirit dwells in you that gives eternal life. Because flesh and blood cannot come to God as the, as uh, the Word of God say, but the only the Spirit. So I'm gonna show you all these things, all these things. Not me saying this, but what the Word of God says. How we can have, uh, we say by His grace. How we have faith, how we actually say, and, how, and actually how the Holy Spirit is in us through God's word. And I'm going to follow God any day to follow what follow man. I'm not telling you not to listen to your uh, your. Uh, uh, please don't take this the wrong way. I'm not telling you not to listen to your pastor or your preacher. Do I? But follow God. Make sure you follow God. Make sure they are following God by His word. Because if they ain't following God by His word, then. You ain't following God by his word, right? And the word was God. Where do you think you're going for eternity? If you ain't following God by his word, his word. But the Bible teaches us that Satan is in this world. Satan is in this world. It tells us, Jesus Christ even said that the Christian of this world shall come and have nothing in us. You know what? In him, excuse me, in him. So Satan is in this world. And if you follow this world, who do you think you're following? 
Everybody, everybody, everybody know? Satan. Father Satan. And if Satan's going to hell come judgment day, where do you think you're going? Same That's it. That's it. But if you follow God by his word, and the word was God, where do you think you're going for eternity? That's it. That's how I can follow God. I can't follow God any other way. Well, you follow this world, you follow this Satan. I have seen it before. I have seen it because I'd be, be hooked to it. You know what? Uh, all this Facebook, I was hooked to it. I was hooked to all this, uh, all this technology. Uh, which I'm not saying that I'm not putting it down. Though, like I'm not putting it down. But it can be hooked. Say got people hooked on technology and not the word of God. We're going to find out, and, and, and as we keep on going, that uh, the Bible teaches that Jesus is going to take vision of those who do not know God. If I, if I don't know God then I know what I'm going for eternity, you know what? Straight to hell. But, as we keep on going, I want to, the reason why I'm saying all this is because it's so crucial to your soul. It's so crucial. If you think you cannot do nothing in life, put God inside of you. Put the word of God inside you. It'll change your whole life around. If you think you cannot stop doing something, you can. Just put the word of God in you. You can stop doing it. Jesus said himself back in Mark, in chapter 8, uh, he said, uh, All things, excuse me, I think it's Mark chapter 9. Uh, I think it's Mark chapter 9, I think. But he said, uh, Mark 9, 23, actually, he said, uh, I think. He said, all things are possible for those that believe. You know, like all things. Believe what? The word of God. And the word was God. How can I believe in God? Only by his word. But we will see that, though. I'm not going to uh, give you too much. We're going to see that. But uh, anybody have any questions with this, though? Because if I let, the, if, uh, if I let Christ go in my heart by faith, how can I do that once again? Mm -hmm. By his word. We got faith if I hear what? The word. The word of God. That's why I let Christ live in my heart by faith. And the Bible teaches that Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell in you for a reason. Okay. We go to uh go to a last uh, 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 uh verse right here. That's uh first Peter. Chapter two. I can read that one. First Peter. Chapter 2, and 1 through 3. <coughs> say, uh, anybody have to say amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I have, yeah. Uh, for the viewers at home, it says, First Peter, chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. And I'll read that one. It says, Whom laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy, and enemies and all evil speaking. And newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby, and so that you may taste of the Lord is gracious. Once again, first Peter chapter two, one through three. It reads, Wherefore lay aside all malice, guile, and hypocrisy, and enemies, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire, desire the sincere milk of the word, that we may grow thereby. If so, ye be uh, excuse me. If so, be ye have taken the Lord as gracious. We need the word of God to grow, to grow out of malice, jealousy, hatred, lying, and backbiting. What we need to grow? The word. And we, and we gotta have desire for the word. It says it right here. When we grow in the word, we grow out of uh, things that are uh that are simple. We grow out of it. We need a word to grow. And we do more babies, we need a word to grow. And if the, we need a word to grow, what we need to grow again? The word. word. And the word is what? Uh the word. word of God. The word of God. And also is what? Faith. Also faith. Alright? So I got the word. If I'm growing in the word, if I'm let the word, if I'm growing in the word, I'm, I'm letting it dwell in me, I'm growing in the what? Faith. That's it. But we need a word to grow. 
And I'm growing in the word. I'm growing in what? Faith. faith. I'm growing in faith. We need a word to go. And he's so growing out of, uh, if you, look, uh, if you have a problem with gambling, if you have a problem with alcoholism or, or uh, drugs, or you have a problem with uh, uh, anything out here that's simple, you have problems with. You know, right? Uh, some people have a problem with sex. Some people have problem with, uh, with uh, uh, addicted to sex. Some people have a problem with uh, a lot of things out here. You know, right? But if you follow in the word of gambling, once again, <coughs> But if you follow in the word of God, help you to grow out of these things. If you really have a desire for his word, it helps you to grow out of things that are negative. That's why the Bible said we need a word to grow. We need a word to grow out of these things. And if I have the word grow in me, I have who, it, or who I have with me. I have once again, I have one of me. Amen. As Ephesians, as, uh, let Christ grow in Ephesians, Ephesians 3, 15, 17, said, let Christ, let Christ dwell in your hearts by faith, right? Yeah. And what we need to grow, and what we need to grow, faith. we need a word to grow. We need a word to grow. Excuse me. We need a word. That's how we grow. That's how we grow by the word, and we grow in faith. And we also let the word of Christ dwell in you, right? And dwelling in you, and you grow in faith of the word of God. So, anyone have any questions? Well, um, I have one, but it's, uh, it's it's like more like a statement. I, I might be going off the path a little bit, but I've heard people say, "Oh, I miss church today, so I'm miss my blessings." What uh, is <laughs> just going to church doesn't give you blessings? Yeah, I, I believe that. Either. I'm just going to church. I mean, like you do a God a favor by going to church. <laughs> You know, God will pray about going to church. You know, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna turn here. I mean, I'm turning here. 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 Uh, go to Gospel of John. I'm gonna ask you a question, uh, sister. Go to Gospel of John, chapter fourteen. Ah, uh, John. Uh, Uh, chapter 14, around my verse 21. Mm-hmm. What did Jesus Christ say once again? He said, He that have my commandments and keepeth them, he is it that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. How can I keep a good memory? What Jesus Christ said, but Judas actually said, uh, Judas, uh, verse 22, say, said unto him, not a quantity, nor how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not the whole world? Jesus says this. Jesus actually has said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come and make our board with him. So, just by going to church right there and there, it's not mm-hmm. true. Jesus Christ, a man will love me, keeps my word, right? Yeah. Oh, by fact, as a matter of fact, I think uh, 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 I have one for the name, but I think it's a Luke G. Christ. Uh, uh, matter of fact, it's a Luke. Let's go, let's go, Luke. Let's go, Luke. I know, I think it's Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. I'd like to ask a question for you, my, uh, 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 for those who are here at Puerto Rico at home, ask this question. Okay, it's a good question because I, I, I heard it a lot of times too. I think it's chapter Luke chapter 8. Excuse me. Uh, uh, let me get there. Let me see. 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 Luke chapter 8, verse 21. The Christ read, that's Luke chapter 8, and verse 21. And he answered and said unto them, My brother and my brother are those that hear the word of God and do it. You know, right? And that go to, they go up to verse uh, 20. We're going to take it out of context. Luke chapter 8, verse 20, 21. 
and, and, and it said, and it read, and it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brother stand without desire to see thee. Jesus said, the Bible read, and he answered and said to them, My mother and my brother is the ones that hear the word of God and do it. Though his mother and brother hear the word of God and do it. Those who want his mother, uh, his brother and mother to hear the word of God and do it. That means do it. Now I'm going to show you how you bless my sister. Stay in Luke. Go to Luke chapter uh, uh, 11, verse 27 and 28. That's how you bless. That's a good question. I, 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 I get it all the time, miss my blessings or this or this or I just go, I made myself, I just go to church so the power to, so the deacon could see me and the members could see me and, and the preacher could see me. Right? I was there, I was there, I was there. That's what I just go to church for I because I ain't no God. I just go to church for that reason. That purpose, that purpose reason only. Not to try to save my soul, but it's to go to church. Mm -hmm. you know, right? So they people see me there, right? Put that form of God in the soul, fanging the fuck with my soul, be the counterfeit, like $18 bill, just go to church. That's it. But we all have a Luke, chapter uh, 11, 27 and 28. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you just how you bless. And it came to pass, and he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the past which thou have hast sucked. But he said, Ye rather bless for things that hear the word of God and keep it. That's how you bless. Once again, Jesus said, uh, Ye rather, yea, thank you, yea, rather bless for things that hear the word of God and keep it. And that's how you are blessed. If Jesus Christ saved this, that's how you're blessed. You better keep his word. It's right in the Bible. Right in the Bible. I know some churches I attended, I don't hear this at all. All I hear is man's commandment. But in closing, I want to say thank you for the viewers of, uh, at home and those who are here. Thank you very much for everything. And I pray that the word you understand the word of God. I understand. I pray you understand the word of God. And I'm and I'm I, and I remember the last bit. I said three weeks. I think this is two weeks. And I'm not mistaken because I was so busy last week. I thought maybe three weeks, but God made me some time that I could post another video uh, to you of the teaching. And I'm trying to get out every two weeks when things always comes up. Satan always try to throw obstacles in your way, but through the grace of God, He let me do it in two weeks. And I thank God for that. I pray that you study these words, the word of God for yourself. It's not my word. It's not what I'm saying. It's what the word of God say. And remember always, this is your eternal soul. Whether I know you or not, I love you. I'm here to teach the truth of God's word to you. So Amen. always remember, remember something that we all will get, we all will be judged. And if you're not following Christ the way he tells you to follow him, then you know where you're going for eternity. And Jesus Christ said, uh, Jesus Christ clearly tells us uh, in the Gospel of John that Satan is the father of all lies. Satan is the father of all lies. And if you are a liar, a backbiter, a hater, all the other things, hypocrisy, uh, ruthless, and some of these things, militia behavior, you know, you all. All these things you see that are evil or sin. And if Satan is the father of all lies, then who is your father then, y'all think? Satan. He's the father of all lies. If you're a liar, then Satan is my father then. I always remember that. And once again, if Satan goes to hell and you follow this world, you follow Satan straight to hell right along with him. So I thank you for viewers for this. And as we go to close the prayers, I thank you for everything and watch for me once again in two weeks. Be another video posted. Thank you once again. Let's go in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for allowing us to come together as one to study your word, the spirit, and the truth. We thank you for all the things, once again, that you have done for us. We never get tired of saying that because you have been so good and so kind to us. And we thank you. And we just pray that the word that we heard this morning, or rather this afternoon, will, it will. Stick with us, dear Lord, not go in one area, rather the other, but follow us each and every day, dear Lord. 
have the assurance of what we need to do if we want to have eternal life by standing in your word and growing in your way and growing in faith. Amen. We thank you for everything. We pray that you watch over us, not just today, but throughout this week until we meet again. And Father God, we pray for the viewers who are at home watching this, that they stay fast in your word, no matter what, follow you by your word, and come to the truth of your divine and holy word before an everlasting true life, as well as myself and for those who are here. We pray these prayers to you in your most divine holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you all once again, and God bless you for everything.